foundation for conducting this session and inviting me on this platform to deliver this presentation on patents uh, to you i hope this session will be very very helpful for you uh, uh, i am one of the as uh, roda ji said i am one of the you know uh, partners practicing in uh, uh, kns partners which is an ip law firm in uh, india uh, and uh, i have my my number of number of years that i have yeah. so uh, i have an experience of 12 years uh, working in the field of patents and iprs and i'll try my best to uh, uh, you know to motivate you to tell you every everything about patents here uh, what i can do in uh, in the next one hour if any one of you have any questions during this session you may ask in the question and uh, answer uh, chat window and i may also be you know making it a bit interactive i'll try to make it bit interactive where i'll ask you uh, yes and no questions uh, uh, while going and you can just type in yes and no in the chat box so that i can go i can understand that uh, i am able to uh, get through to my participants so there is a chat window you can see where the chat window is and as we go through the session you can when i ask a question you can just uh, reply on the chat window and i'll come to know whether there is an understanding going through uh, to my participants and or not so once again i you know thank you and so the overall theme of this session that has been kept by mr roji is to uh, make a uh, make uh, you know to get an understanding of what patents uh, are how how we can register a patent in india and what actually uh, are the requirements of getting a patent so we will go one by one in this session i'll try to go a bit slowly i know this is a very not a very very easy subject to understand but i hope uh, i'll i'll be able to Uh, get across to you and answer all your queries so first uh, let's uh, let me ask everyone a question here and you can type yes or no in the chat window so i'll ask how many of uh, if you know about patents if you heard if you have heard about patents you can just type yes and if you have not heard about patents this is your first time you can just type no yeah wonderful i see many yes that's so nice to hear uh, see yes thank you so much for that and uh so if any one of you have filed a patent in your name can you just type a yes over there okay i don't see any response uh yes i see i see one response from uh, nupur thank you thank you for letting me know uh so if you have any queries uh, i am here and i also see a response from ishan he says no thank you very much yes yes yeah yeah i get your responses so we will go ahead with the with the uh, presentation right now so first of all uh, let us understand as to what a patent is or you know what a patent can do as we all must have uh, uh, seen the first session about iprs in general intellectual property rights so patents is also one of the intellectual property rights it's a monopolistic right it gives certain rights certain uh, uh, rights to one of the the individual who gets a patent in his name who grants the right the right is granted by the government um, when the right is granted when the person files or applies for an uh, applies for a, a patent over his invention to the government department and thereby he also uh, the person who is applying for the patent also you know discloses the invention so the invention becomes public after a certain while also who can apply for a patent the patent can be applied or the patent can be granted for uh, to the owner and his assignee so the owner can be the individual here 
or he can be the uh, company uh, to which the own individual assigns the patent. And the patent is granted for a limited period of time. The limited period of time is 20 years, uh, beginning from the date on which one applies for a patent. It's also called a negative right, as I have mentioned here. Why is it called a negative right? Because in law, it says that uh, anyone who's got a patent, he can stop anyone else from using his invention without his uh, consent. So it, the patent uh, provides, provides the right to stop others from using your patent, your invention without your consent. So it's a negative right. It's also a territorial right, as I mentioned. Territorial right would mean if you apply for a patent in India, you get protection only in India. You don't get a protection outside India. Similarly, if you uh, apply a patent in US, you get a patent only in US. You don't get a protection anywhere uh, else other than US. So in other words, you have to apply for a patent in each country where you wish to apply. So any example of negative right, uh, uh, as I've been asked, it would be, see, when you stop someone else from using your right, it's called a negative right. And positive right would be, for example, some you get a right to use for your own benefit. That's a positive right. Are you getting me? Yes. So a statutory right, a statutory right would mean that uh, it's a it's a right given to you by law by a statute so here the law that uh, comes into place called the patents act uh, which is passed by the parliament and also on the right hand see you uh, right hand side of the slide you see uh, a certificate generated by the united states of, uh, states of america for a patent in the us so if you get a patent in the us that's the kind of certificate you get Similar certificate you get in India as well. So main purpose of getting a patent is to encourage innovation, industrial growth. Also, I understand that there must be many researchers uh, who must be listening to the talk. And there is always a question among the researchers, among the inventors that whether to go for a publication or apply for a patent, what should be done? So a publication or a patent. And the answer is in front of our eyes. Once we publish our research work or our invention and we don't apply a patent, the rights perish. We actually give away our rights. But uh, if we apply for a patent, uh, the patent will be published and we can reap profits out of it. We can you know, uh, generate profits out of it. We can uh, use the invention ourselves. You can, we can commercialize, we can uh, give it to others. Uh, we can. Uh, license license our inventions and do a lot of a lot of things which is not the case with publication and of course patent perishes after 20 years of time so first file so what do we learn from this first file a patent application before publishing or marketing the product patent is the best publication publish frequently so even if you have to publish and you cannot patent in certain circumstances uh, the patent may not be possible, then you publish your invention frequently. And what publication does, it stops a competitor from patenting your uh, publication or your innovation. What are the rights conferred by a patent? As I said earlier, it prevents others from making, using, offering for sale, selling, importing, infringing products in the country where the patent was granted. So, when we say it prevents others, then we say that it's a negative right. Or when it allows you to do something, then it's a positive right. Sell these rights to conclude uh, licensing agreements. So it also gives you a right because it's an intellectual property. When you get a patent over your invention, your invention came through your innovative mind, you applied your uh, mind you spent time and resources and money on your doing your research work coming out with the invention so of course it has to have some benefit uh, give you some benefit and it gives you the benefit that you can use the invention you can commercialize the invention it 
you can uh, sell the rights over your invention to other people and have licensing contracts. So it's a kind of, again, a property, intellectual property. That's why we call it a you know, property. So again, the rights are for 20 years from the date of filing of the patent application. The, yeah. So let us look at the requirements. What are the basic three requirements of getting a patent? Uh, once you come out with your invention, how to understand, how to know whether the invention is patentable or not, is to look at these three criteria. Number one criteria, whether the invention is novel or not, or whether the invention has an inventive step or not, and whether the invention has a utility. So we will go, uh, we will understand these three uh, requirements one by one. And of course, as we go further, we will understand that nowadays most of the inventions that come up are incremental inventions are inventions over already existing uh, things and people find problems in those things they come up with solutions and thereby the solution uh, is an invention we can get a patent over our solution so let us look at what is novelty inventive step and industrial application or also called utility here so let us consider these group of fishes and we see two types of fishes here, blue and orange. So let us understand that the blue fishes are already existing knowledge. They are already existing knowledge and we have come out with an, uh, uh, we have come out with an invention which is a orange fish. So in order to understand that there is novelty, there needs to be only one difference from the already existing knowledge. So if blue is the uh, color of fishes of existing knowledge and orange is distinct, just one difference that is in the color would actually uh, qualify for novelty. The criteria of novelty would qualify for the orange fish. There is nothing more required, just one difference from the existing knowledge. Let us understand that more in detail. And of course, that knowledge has to be something which is technical knowledge. Or we need to ask a question to ourselves when we come out with an invention that what is the technical contribution to the current state of art? So if blue fishes are the current state of art, then what is the technical contribution? Or we need to have a comparison between the new and the prior art. So prior art or current state of art are uh, almost uh, are same things. Let's not confuse among themselves, but we need to understand that there is one difference between the new and the prior art. What is prior art? Something which is not published in any form earlier, something which is not made available, disclosed to the public, something which is not sold commercially or used by public. So something which is so something, so something which is, uh, you know, uh, which is published in any form would constitute a prior art, which is already there available, disclosed to the public is a prior art and something which is commercially uh, available is a prior art. And novelty would be destroyed by prior use publication. So here are examples of what is a prior art. Any publication paper, so if someone has already published a paper and we come across that paper, our invention is already disclosed in that paper, then that would be prior art for our invention. Any prior sale uh, of the, if, if the inventor himself makes a sale before applying for the patent, the inventor, he himself goes, single sale would constitute, uh, can constitute a prior art. Providing a sample or a market survey can constitute a prior art. Ex even accidental use sometimes can constitute a prior art. So we, the inventor needs to be careful of all these things that he doesn't even go and circulate pamphlets or even share a presentation before he applies for a patent. So before one applies for a patent, one needs to take care of all these things that these don't happen. The first thing one needs to do is just disclose the invention to the patent attorney and maybe then apply 
and maybe for applying a patent. So that is the first thing one must do before he does any of these things. So few examples, very basic examples uh, of what can be novel uh, or what can be an invention in front of you. As you see here, there are four needles. And uh, uh, so one is used for sewing in sewing machines. One is used for hand uh, sewing. And those needles at the bottom are used for, uh, you know, uh, stitching of stitching of uh, wounds. And the fourth one on the right hand side is used for fishing. So all the four needles have little difference between them. And this little difference, as you see, on the top two needles, there is only one difference. On the left hand side, the needle has the eye on the side on the head side and on the right hand side the needle has a has the eye where the thread has to be put uh, on the tip side only one minute difference is there but if you see they are both technically very different the use of the needle that has eye on the tip side can be used in a sewing machine and actually when that happened it created a whole industrial revolution all that stitching that used to be done by hand could be done by machines. So just one small difference. And all you can understand is that they're used for different purposes. Only one minute difference is there uh, in each of them uh, or, or two differences, but they're all patentable. And they're all novel with respect to each other. Let us see more examples. Again, very basic. We use uh, these things. We have seen these things being used somewhere, uh, maybe in a salon or maybe uh, we have all these uh, scissors at home used for cutting cloth, cutting paper, cutting hair, or even thinning of hair or cutting wires. So all these are different with the, among each other. Even one difference can constitute novel uh, novelty. So. Let us look at what is a problem solution approach or how we can also gain from looking at problems. When we see some object or when we use some object, we always have uh, come up with this, uh, sometime or the other, we come out with this uh, thought in our mind that, oh, if this object could be used in this manner, I could have done things better. Or if this object could be in, used in some other manner, I could do a lot of things, right? So as we see the world of patents or, uh, or the world of inventions that we see over the past, uh, over the previous century and before that, we have seen that uh, industrial revolution has taken place and so many inventions have come up that has made our lives so easy and how that has happened. So we'll take one basic example of a bicycle. So as you see that, you know, in, in the earlier 18th century and 19th century, there was a dearth of horses. It was not only a dearth of horses, but horses were very costly to own and to maintain. And people for conveying from one place to another needed horses. They needed uh, carriages, which were run by horses. So because there was a dearth of horses and they were costly, the transport was costly, not everyone could afford it. So Dryas was an inventor who came up with the invention. He saw a problem that there is a problem, okay, there's a dearth of horses and he came up with the solution of having a hobby horse. And on the right hand, see you see the image, uh, that is a hobby horse he came up with, is the first ever concept of a bicycle that he came up with actually. It has two wooden wheels. So again, the wheels are of wood, as you see there at that time. A wooden frame, uh, riders uh, leather, the saddle is also of leather. And then there are two rudimentary set of wooden handlebars, which would turn the front wheel. And riders simply push the vehicle uh, or, or the device forward with their feet. There was no concept of pedals. And no gears, no pedals and even no brakes. So do you know that it was banned from sidewalks over, over you know, posing as a danger to the pedestrians because it 
didn't have, even have brakes and riders had to stop it by using their feet. So there were problems with this hobby horse and someone came up with a solution. He put a wooden contraption with two steel wheels. Instead of wooden wheels, now there were steel wheels. There were pedals and fixed gear system was there. There was a fixed gear as you see in the basic cycle that is now. And it was known as Velocipede. Still it had uh, you know, fast foot or a bone shaker. A French carriage maker obtained a US patent for this in, uh, in the year 1866. You see many, many examples and modifications of Velocipede here. Uh, and all these are examples, modifications that people came up with uh, at that time. So the inventions developed further uh, with the coming of bicycle. In 1870, there was a safety bicycle. 1874, aerial bicycle in Britain kicked off. And then a tension absorbing front wheel was there. In 1885, that's when the uh, modern bicycle concept came in. So it almost took several years. To, you see, almost here the timeline shows around 20 years or even more than that. It took before Rover was invented. Starley introduced the Rover. It's the first uh, modern bicycle with nearly equal sized wheels, having sent up your steering and differential gears that operate with a chain drive. And uh, you see, there were two bikes, uh, one the high bike, uh, which came earlier, which had huge high uh, wheels, but then the modern bicycle. And uh, it also had, had pedals and a chain, which could pull the uh, rear wheel forward. So this is how, you know, over the period, over the years that one problem after another in the cycle was uh, taken off and some solution was provided and even if you see in the seat there were some uh, cushioning provided or uh, springs provided for easy uh, so that they can be easy on the bottoms of the rider so this is this was novelty now let us understand as to what is the second requirement which is of inventive step and uh, what do we understand from inventive step? So as it is defined our, in our patent law in India, it's a feature of an in invention that involves technical advancement as compared to existing knowledge or having economic significance or both. That makes the invention not obvious to a person skilled in the art. So what do we keep in mind here? We keep in mind here that there is some technical advancement provided to the invention, to the existing knowledge. So what we need to understand when we come up with some invention that there is technical advancement or not. Second thing we need to understand that it is not obvious to a person ordinary skilled in the art. So these are the two basic things, technical advancement. Second thing, not obvious to a person ordinary skilled in the art. So what is not obvious to a person uh, ordinary skilled in the art? That's something more than what a person skilled in the art, na, art would normally expect or envisage. We can you know, see further. So same example, earlier there were blue fishes and an orange fish. There was existing knowledge in the blue fishes. Orange was our invention. Now we provide some more fins to the fish, to the orange fish. And those fish are the technical advancement the fins provide you know speed you can say that it provides speed and easy uh, way of swimming in the water so that is where you know technical uh, step is or invent inventive step is that it has fins and other fishes don't have or the persons, the people who came up with other fishes never envisaged that someone could uh, put a fins on the uh, fish. We'll understand by more uh, examples uh, in the next few slides. So what we need to understand when we uh, look at the invention uh, and that whether it has inventive step or not, is that it is not the logical next step or it is non-obvious step or feature to a person skilled in the art. 
Now, who is a person skilled in the art? Who is an ordinary person skilled in the art? Here, we are not talking of an expert. The person of ordinary skill in the art has to be a person of average intelligence. He may he need not be a prodigy or an expert in the field. Of course, he should be aware of all the publications in the art. So, he if he sees several publications, if he can combine them, then uh, of course a person of average intelligence may be able to combine them. So that that is a person of ordinary skill in the art. And as per instructions, he can carry out experiments. And person ordinary skill in the art may be even a team. So if there is a team, if there is a scientific team, they can even be person skilled in the art. So it's a very subjective term as we understand here. Inventive step. What is an inventive step? Whether the invention qualifies to be uh, having an inventive step or not is a very subjective term. It depends upon not only upon the publications that are available. Uh, because two publications, three publications can be combined or more publications can be combined when we look at inventive step. But not only that, but what an average person uh, would envisage uh, when he sees the invention. So this is one of the examples. If you see, there are two images, left hand side, right hand side. Left hand side is an original image. Right hand side is a filtered image. And there are no grains on the right hand side image they are filtered so that's uh, again this technical advancement person on left who came up with the invention on left hand side could not come up with the invention on right hand side he'd never applied filters to the image another example is of standard definition high definition uh, again you see the clarity in high definition increases a lot and let us take the example of telegraph systems or uh, the current modern wireless communication. Earlier, uh, as you all know, that uh, there used to be only wired communication. There was no concept of wireless communication. And people used to transmit uh, messages from uh, one place to another by, uh, by using wires. And there were problems. The problems were that, uh, you know, you could not communicate to long distances. It was very difficult. So it was uh, Marconi who came up with the concept of radio telegraphy. And he invented that radio telegraphy systems and made the wires go away. And that is how we are able to communicate with each other uh, today by wireless communication. So is this is the wireless communication novel over wired communication? The answer is yes. Converting, uh, there, uh, there are, you know, there's technical change earlier. There were only electrical signals, but, but now we convert electrical signals into radio signals and back to electrical signals when they reach the receiver side. Transmitting and uh, receiving messages wirelessly using telegraphy systems. So, of course, the invention is novel. There is just one difference. There are no wires. Wires were eliminated. One difference is sufficient to constitute novelty. Is there an inventive step? So, let us ask uh, for invent inventive step. Is there a technical advancement? The answer would be again, yes. There is a technical advancement. Uh, radio transmission and reception is there. Long distance communication became possible, reduced data loss, and increased communication speed. These are all examples of technical advancement. And, uh, and no one could do it earlier. So this alone constitutes, you know, that a person uh, skilled in the art was, was not able to do it. Uh, no one could do it earlier. If anyone had done it earlier, he could have come up with it. Or, there was no publication found earlier, uh, which was dated earlier, previous to when Marconi came up with the invention. There was no publication found of wireless communication. So he got the patent for that. So these were the two concepts, uh, two requirements of novelty and in inventive step. And the third uh, requirement is of industrial application. What is industrial application? Invention that is capable of being used, made, uh, in an industry. Let us look at few examples to understand uh, whether these inventions are uh, 
do they qualify the criteria of industrial application so here i would like you to again uh, go to your chat boxes and reply in yes and no uh, you look at the screen where this invention uh, having three legs uh, stockings uh, with three legs uh, are uh, is it is it uh, having some industrial application uh, can i get your responses please do you see an industrial application in this can this be used no yeah yes thank you so next one let's see the next so here again you know this person is trying to open two bottles at the same time and i think he never fully understood the problem so again this would qualify to be no you see a bike here uh, can someone ride it no answer would be again no again maybe this bike may be <laughs> required to be ridden with hands and feet so these are few examples just to tell you that these don't qualify to be uh, having industrial application so industrial application anything that has industrial application made and used in an industry qualifies to be industrially applicable now look at let us look at very very simple inventions uh, because simplicity is not the bar of the invention i know where uh, talked about simplicity inventions being simple if a invention ha has novelty if a invention has inventive step and if a invention has industrial application then uh, even if it is simple it one can get a patent for it so here one uh, very simple invention uh, one person came up to me and actually uh, the inventor came up to our office and we discussed about it we filed a patent for him he got a patent and he made an instrument for visually impaired for teaching chemical science in our labs in our chemi chemistry laboratories we see uh, these kind of instruments and uh, visually impaired people people who cannot see uh, were not able to perform experiments so but this person came out uh, with this invention and he did simple things he put sensors at several places so that uh, whenever uh, the solution in the, in the flask or in the pipette reaches at certain levels uh, there is a buzzer buzzer sound or the alarm sound is there and different sounds for different levels so the person who is visually impaired can still come to understand whether uh, the solution has reached uh, that level or not so and he can also perform uh, chemistry experiments finally he got a patent on this uh, this is another simple invention a uh, wash basin uh, this invention was actually put before masjids and gurudwaras there it is also necessary to wash your feet before you go inside and as you can see uh, there is a lid uh, below uh, 15 number 15 where which can be opened and uh, your foot can be inserted inside to wash your feet so very simple invention i think we all are uh, very very uh, you know we we all have used this we have all seen this simple tripod placed in a pizza stand it's a simple piece of piece of plastic and it's called a pizza saver because it saves pizza from sticking to the top uh, cover of the box uh, this is one of the most simplest inventions i could uh, you know find uh, while preparing for this presentation and it got a patent it was invented 30 years ago so uh, let us look at a uh, couple of more case studies uh, which will make you uh, further understand and uh, clarify your doubts uh, if any uh, i have two case studies in uh, for you uh, one is a smoking device and other is the shoe system yeah so we all have seen uh, these smoking devices i'm calling them smoking devices here uh so bd cigarette cigar and
and these are smoking devices so before uh, someone could you know be bd cigar hookah pipe so then there is a smoking device cigarette the difference in uh, a cigarette and earliest devices is one that the cigarette has a filter which none of the other devices have so bd doesn't have a filter and therefore it's more harmful to smoke as toxic gases and nicotine and all can be inhaled by the user so this solution was provided and uh, again uh, someone someone saw a problem with uh, the cigarette as well that it doesn't provide different flavor so he gave another solution to the cigarette so is it possible to provide a flavor someone asked and he said oh introducing flavor in the cigarette and yes the person came out with a matrix delivery system flavor is dispersed through a solid carrier material in granular form uh, so in the filter area as i'll go to the next slide and show you certain granules as you see here there are certain granules that can be put here and uh, uh, near the filter area so when the smoker uh, and the smoker can release the flavor into the cigarette at any chosen time by pressing the filter so as to crush the capsule and hence activate the uh, system in the cigarette and there is a audible pop uh, which can be heard by the smoker whenever the rupture of the capsule happens uh, so this was the invention and uh, on the top of the slide you see uh, the patent application number this was a huge success worldwide as the smokers could not only smoke but also get the uh, flavor which they wanted the next case study is of a special shoe system we all have heard or seen uh, seen michael jackson uh, how he danced and he threw the uh, crowd into a frenzy whenever he came on the stage and the moves he made with it with his dance and uh, what all he did you know inventions could be in technical fields but also can be uh, in fields which are not technical and michael jackson made use of that yes please alisha i see you have a question can you please ask your question sorry sir it was my mistake good evening good evening uh, okay so we were talking of the special shoe system and uh, so all have seen you know all have seen michael jackson and the one move he used to make uh, was very very uh, interesting was very very exciting it made people actually mad whenever he made that move and how he made that move we will now see we will learn today by uh, you know just stick with me for a couple of more minutes so he had a special shoe system a special shoe system which he could wear and uh, he had to lean forward beyond his center of gravity that's the move he used to make so michael jackson used to move forward on the stage beyond a point uh, of his center of gravity if any normal person does that he will even he will definitely fall on his face but how michael jackson could do it he had a special shoe system and his shoes had a special design heel slot which can be detachably engaged with the hitch member and hitch member was located on the uh, platform or on the stage where he performed so thereby you know engaging his shoe with the hitch member and uh, he could lean forward so this is the kind of shoe he used to wear uh, this is the uh, one of the views of the shoes and you see here on the right hand side there are two figures the top one is actually the front view not very very uh, uh, easily understandable but on the uh, bottom right corner it's the side view and that is how much one could lean so this is uh, the you know exploded view of the heel that he had that he used to wear uh, and he could uh, 
see you you can see that there is a block uh, you know where he could uh, engage with the engage with the nail kind of a nail that was provided on the platform so if you see number 50 on the top there is a nail that could be engaged or even even on the bottom side there is uh, number 34 a nail is seen right so these are pictures from that patent from that patent that existed uh, filed by michael jackson this is uh, his patent uh, as you can see this is the patent document and these are the claims of the patent document now if you see here uh, i'll go back to the slide a patent document so once you apply for an invention what do we apply for uh in the in in the application we have to disclose our invention we have to disclose to which field it relates to we have to disclose what is the problem in the prior art we have to disclose uh all the figures that we may have in our invention and we have to describe our invention in detail and there is one major section where uh, which talks about the claims so claims are actually where we define the invention and they have to be written, written in a certain form so there is a format of writing uh, the patent application uh, when we apply for a patent and uh, you can uh, you can also uh, you can also uh, if you if you want to see uh, several patents then uh, you can go on to google patents Uh, google has has its own database of patents you just go to google you type patents then uh, on the next page you will get a result that google patents page is there you can go to google patents page and you can type any uh, you know any uh, word of your choice any any term of your choice you can type mobile phone you can type any uh, any any div, uh, words or any terms for which you want want to find a patent on Uh, right and you will uh, come across several several documents uh, which people might have registered for that particular object and you can open one of them you can see how patent application is there what kind of description is there uh, and what all is written in there so this is the these are the claims of uh, michael jackson's patents as you can see his uh, filed a patent and Uh, a system for engaging shoes uh, with a hitch means to permit a person standing on a stage surface to lean forward beyond his or her center of gravity comprising at least one shoe having a heel with a first engagement means and blah 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 and second engagement means detachably engageable with the first engagement so brief in brief uh, you know these are the claims and uh, so that is there is a case with uh, applying uh, you know for a patent and of course as uh, as i talked about that patent must qualify three basic requirements of novelty inventive step and industrial application so when we file a patent application uh, at the government office the patent op uh, so this is the procedure that i have described here in front of you and once we apply for a patent uh, or a new application it is published uh, within 18 months from the date we apply then only it is open to public and um, after publication it undergoes examination now why examination is there because at the patent office also they need to understand they need to see they need, they evaluate they scrutinize the patent whether it qualifies the three criteria that i discussed about so they will uh, you know search for any prior publications that are available for checking whether the patent is novel inventive or not and whether the invention has industrial application or not so all uh, so this they they you know they send examination reports are there and if uh, one can file a response to the examination reports if the examiner is still not convinced uh, a hearing opportunity can be given there you know one can have a video conferencing with the examiner examiner or earlier it used to happen physically one needed to visit the patent office and uh, apply uh, and and you know uh, 
discuss the invention over there with the examiner and if one is able to comply with all the objections and satisfy the examiner that in the invention uh, is is having in a novelty inventive step and industrial application then the invention would be finally granted or it would get a patent so that is a basic procedure that i would you know want to tell you and not make uh, much uh, uh, it make it much complicated in india uh, so right now in delhi you uh, there is a patent office in dwarka there's another patent office in mumbai uh, there's one in calcutta and there is one in chennai so uh, why four are there they are all divided based on uh, geography jurisprudence is there uh, sorry sorry uh, there is they are all divided on geography and uh, for north india it's delhi so whoever is there in north india can apply for a patent in delhi and uh, so this yeah so this is this is the basic uh, you know procedure of getting a patent in india but uh, again uh, one must you know can i would say that since it's a very uh, um, the applying for a patent it's is not an easy process one must always uh, take help of a, of an expert uh, person who knows how to apply what to uh, what to write in a patent application and then one must file a patent right so i hope you understood the, you know uh, the the uh, basics of patent here and i would take you through certain examples uh, and all you is you know put your thinking and see the following slides uh, i hope you will like these slides and these are very basic invention very very simple inventions we see so a butter stick and a chair for a grandpa we all have problems whenever we go in a conference you know holding our tea cups and talking with the other person and also wanting to take a cookie so why not have a biscuit pocket and we all have problems when we go you know for morning walks and jogging to hold our phone in our pockets rather have it in our shoe and listen to music we all must have faced this problem again of pulling a plug out of the socket and uh, men actually must have faced you know making a french pair so in a metro it's very difficult uh, those image is not very clear here but actually the girl is having uh, some kind of a tie here just to hold her head while she is still standing in a metro and uh, a tool that serves to clean the ears in a very sophisticated way very very useful in corona a kind of an umbrella which uh, covers you from all <laughs> uh, all the surroundings uh tie with uh, another use and toothpaste so this was uh, the presentation i hope uh, every one of you could understand and uh, can get a glimpse of get a hint of what patents are what are the requirements of patents how we can register a patent where we can file a patent mm, so if you have any questions you can ask me now okay i see one question from nupur can we patent mathematical algorithms uh, so uh, i would say you know mathematical algorithms uh, patenting is uh, is is not possible it's not uh, under the in, un, under indian patent law uh, there are several kinds of inventions which cannot be patented and one of such inventions is mathematical algorithms and uh, even algorithms per se they are not patented they are not patentable so one cannot 
patent mathematical algorithms but if you can uh, show where you are using this mathematical algorithm because many things can be represented by way of or can be done by way of mathematical algorithms even uh, uh, pros processing signals and many uh, you know you can uh, nowadays you are doing machine learning all use mathematical algorithms and uh, uh, all those inventions can be you know patented if one can also show where they are being used and you know club the mathematical algorithm with their uh, where with their application and with the hardware if there is any if one is using any hardware uh, while you know applying the math mathematical algorithm then there may be a chance that they can be patented so another question i see is any recent judgment which shows the changing trend landmark judgment in patent law in india uh, yeah definitely uh, nowadays uh, so patents is a quasi judicial body you know uh, uh, there is a patent office where you apply for a patent and patent office is a quasi, quasi judicial body as one might understand a uh, person people who are studying in uh, law and there's an appellate body as well intellectual uh, uh, appellate board property appellate board ipab we, which we call in short and nowadays uh, there are few judgments that have come recently you can uh, get to know about farid al alani one of the judgments sir any software which would you suggest for prior art search uh, varun jain is asking uh, okay so if you want to you know there are many softwares existing there are paid and uh, as well as free softwares paid uh, free softwares would be google patents uh, there is one more software called free patents online uh, you can you know search for patents on these for free uh, and uh, there is one you know paid uh, there are there are a couple of paid as well uh, so you can uh, uh, so uh, one is uh, from lexis nexis then there are a couple of more paid softwares available feedback form uh, okay okay yeah. mike as so, usual uh, it is always great to have you among us <laughs> yeah vikerology thank you so much it's uh, even uh, good for me pleasure for me also to present uh, in front of everyone so many thanks giving messages we are getting in the chat box yeah so i can see one message from pragya for patent register of any idea is it important to work on that idea before register so what i understand from your question pragya is that uh, you are asking whether uh uh it is important to work on that idea or see it's uh you don't have to show to the patent office that your invention is uh workable or uh, not but it should be workable only then one can get a patent uh, then one must apply for a patent it's not a uh, you know no It, it the process involves cost as well so one might uh, want to apply for a patent only if the invention works but if one is hopeful that uh, the invention will eventually work and uh, one can still apply for a patent uh, uh, do i answer your uh, question pragya uh, or maybe maybe you can uh, make it more clear to me then i can answer So, Dr. R. K. Jain is asking, what is the difference between direct and indirect patent infringement? Uh, so, uh, what I understand uh, from uh, your question, Dr. Jain, is, you know, direct patent infringement. I have not heard of these uh, terms. I patent infringement is patent infringement. If someone uh, is infringing your patent, or someone is uh working your patent without your consent uh, consent then that constitutes a, a patent infringement do patents include how many inventions work akshat mishra is asking 
and do patents include how my how my inventions yeah of course you need to show how your invention work uh, in while filing the patent application okay i'll need to go i'll need to see where the questions uh, there are two more questions being asked how much does it cost to get a patent in india so in india if you are applying in an individual's name the cost could be anywhere between uh, because it does involve the cost of a patent attorney you must be wanting to hire a patent attorney or a patent agent uh, one who is experienced or expert in uh, getting a patent drafting a patent for you filing a patent for you if you include his cost as well so it could be anywhere between 1 lakh to 1.5 lakh you could get it for cheaper as well then but of course then it it all depends upon the cost of the patent attorney uh, the cost of patent office are not much uh, out of let's say if the total cost of 1 lakh then uh, cost of patent office uh, will be somewhere around uh, 15 to 20000 if you are applying in an individual's name in a company's name the costs the official costs are four times more than the cost for an individual so can you please give some advice related to clear patent agent examination uh so for clearing patent as it isn't examination i'll suggest that you uh, get a patent act for yourself you look at the forms what forms are there in the patent act uh, you look at the sections and the rules that are applicable for each form uh, and that will be very helpful for you that is the best method to study okay pragya is asking uh, dr arora says thank you everyone sumit chahan thank you feedback link please pragya is asking just uh, just example i have an idea and i am not confident that idea will work or not then in this situation file for patent register or not so i'll say you know you should be fair should be at least somewhat confident the idea will work and you can try filing a uh so in patents there is a concept of filing a provisional patent and a complete patent so provisional patent is mainly having one purpose that is to secure a date because the date is very important with patents once you file the patent there is a date given uh, the date on which you apply the patent is the date uh, any art existing before that date can will qualify as a prior art so the more you delay uh, filing the patent application there will there can be more prior arts which can uh, be there uh, uh, which can hamper your uh, you know getting a patent for you so that date is very important and if you are not very confident about working of the patent you can file a provisional patent uh, so provisional patent in other words it's not a complete patent you need not give the whole uh, thing about uh, your patent you can just give the concept of your uh, give the concept of your invention over there you need, need not give all the details for your patent and uh, but there's just one year time uh, from the starting of the provisional patent that you need need to file a complete patent but uh, so by the time you file complete patent you should be ready with uh, all the details you should be clear of all the doubts so ishan is asking what if i apply patent in individual's name and use uh, in my own co company will the cost be according to commercial use or individual use so i am not very uh, able to very clearly understand uh, what the question is here ishan uh,
so i understand if you apply for a patent in individual's name you can definitely apply for a patent in individual's name uh, but uh, some companies do have a uh, you know when they when, when you sign an agreement with a company for which you are working uh, they do have a clause mentioned that if you because you if you are working in a research uh, department in the company then you may not be able to file a patent for the same kind of research in your own, own name so you must look at the company's uh, the agreement which you sign with the company when you start working with the company if the agreement doesn't cover anything like that then you are free to file in individual's name but you need to be very cautious when you do that i think we have covered all the questions thank yeah so thanks mank and uh... You all the participants, you can fill the form now. Feedback form has been shared in the chat box. And uh, thank you once again, Mike, for being with us. As usual, uh, the, in today's session also, we got uh, good information and knowledge about patent and patenting. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank you, Rodoji. And thank you everyone for uh, being patient and listening to me. I hope I could, uh, you know, increase everyone's awareness and knowledge here and also answer your queries uh, thank you very much and if any one of you have still any questions you can reach out to me at my email id which i mentioned over there mayank at the rate knspartners.com thank you i'll be help, helpful to i'll be helpful to answer or help anyone in getting a patent thank, thank you very you. much thank you to all the participants, actually now we are going to launch a three months program on innovation and entrepreneurship. It will be launched from 21st September 2020. So if you or your students, they want to register for this particular program, information has been shared through our website. You know our website, it is innovationfoundation.org. And I will also request Rahul ji to kindly share in the group, which has especially be prepared for you people. Uh, you or any of your known person who want to register this program we are going to launch in association with GIZ therefore a certificate will be provided to you by Invasion Foundation along with GIZ. GIZ Germany is an international organization so total there will be 40 sessions some of the sessions will be taken up by our in-house faculty and some of the sessions will be taken up by some experts so I will suggest you all to kindly join that particular program we are going to start it from 21st of September, but the registration that will be closed on 19th of September this month only. Okay, thanks. And thanks to all the participants for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.